Hello everyone, my name is Himanshu Sharma. In this video, we will secure our rest endpoint using key clock. So let's get started. And first let me show you the application which we are protecting. So this is Spring Boot application. And the setup required for this one is actually four dependencies. These four, uh, we are going to use or to client or to resource server, Spring Boot starter security, and start a web. So if we go to Spring Initializer website over here, you need to select Maven. You can specify these information. So we say Spring define key block. Okay. And yeah, version 17 jar and for dependencies will be needing web security and then or to client and or to resource server. So in the previous video, we secure our rest endpoint using Spring Boot authorization server. In this one, we will be securing with key clock. So these are the four dependencies we need web security client and resource server so if you explore and you will get these all right so let's head to the project here i already have the rest endpoint ready so i created a controller where i have specified a hello endpoint which is just returning hello okay and then we have a security config it, this one is also quite minimal it's a configuration enabling the web security and then we are uh, or like putting the security filter chain bean injecting the bean for this one and uh, these are the details which we need to provide for uh, we are saying that to authorize every request authenticate and then for the resource server, we are saying to go with the JWT with defaults uh, customizer. That's all. Now moving on to the main application here, there will be no uh, change. It remains as is. And then all the configuration comes down to the application properties file. Here the first three is uh, already aware, the color one. And then we are giving the port 8181 because we are about to run the key clock also on our local, which will be uh, running on 8080. So I change it to 8181. And then this is just for our logging purpose. Then these are the configurations we need. So here the key clock client ID is the one which we are going to specify uh, in the key clock uh, setup. And then the grant type we are going with the authorization code. And the key clock scope is uh, open id for issuer uri this will be the url for the key clock server and here this ream we are going to create this one in the key clock and this user you can define uh, any name you like same goes for jwt issuer also the same it, it will be the same url as this one so pretty minimal code uh, nothing much over here so first let's head to the key clock. So if right now I try to run it, it will not work. So if I just run it, it will try to interact with the key clock server and it will fail. Right. So we need to fix this part. So let's head to the key clock website. Here what you have to do is uh, get to the get started page. And here select this one, now open JDK one. And then you have the option to download this zip file download it and extract it so in my case i have put it in the key clock directory uh, under my software folder and here here we need to go into the bin directory so we say bin and then if you refer this link though they mention the command yeah here this one we are going to use the start dev the same command so let's head to the terminal and we say 
TC and then start tab. Okay, we are getting the message now running the server in development mode. Okay, so now head to the uh, key clock server which is localhost uh, 8080 okay and here what you have to do is uh, you need to create an admin user so let me close uh, close others and here a admin 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 and admin so i created a use uh, admin user with name admin and password also admin so create it the user is created again click on the admin console now you need to provide that same admin admin uh, yeah admin admin so you can uh, create any uh, any name or any password so it's up to you so here first thing we have to do is we need to create a rail so create and we say my app rail and this is the one which we specified in our configuration also over here so if you don't want it you want to uh, have a different name so we can say like uh, spring rail okay and then we just create it and this got created now what we have to do is we need to create a client under this realm so we click on clients and i'll say client and here we say spring client okay and you can leave all other options as is next next and save so we have the client now we need to make sure that this client should be the same which we are specifying over here client id so let me change it now spring client and that realm again that also needs to be spring realm and the same applies here okay this can be anything you can say spring app user okay all right now head back to the key clock uh, console and over here uh, yeah we have the client now let's create a role so what happens is uh, we need roles that needs to be assigned to a user okay so let's create a role and we say uh, spring uh, spring user role okay and we save it and th that's it you don't need to do anything else now head to the users here let's create a new user so here let's create with my name and first name last name it's up to you you want to give it or not these are not uh, mandatory fields and uh, that's it create now once you create uh, create the user you have the options to assign the role here role mapping tab click on it assign role and here you will get the role which you have created earlier spring user role you select this one assign now it's coming over here we click on credentials and then we create a password for the user so let's say i'm giving password as pa123 and then PASS123 right so this will be ok1 and this one is ok2 pass123 pass123 alright it's not temporary and save it save password that's it so we have our user ready so user is created with a username Himanshu and the role assigned to this user is spring user role okay uh, this role we created in the realm roles over here and then we have created the client which is representing our uh, client id in the spring uh, 
properties over here okay so here our client is a spring client and then our realm is spring realm okay so that's all we need in the console side so now let's head to the postman and check if this is setup is working so here what we have to do is we need to create a post request and the body you are going to use this option x uh, ww form uh, url encoded and the url this much till here realms is of uh, key clock only this is going to be the realm which uh, we have just now created so in our case it will be spring realm protocol open id connect token so with this endpoint we can request a token and now we are requesting token for which user uh, for this client which in our case uh, is spring client now so we copy this one we change this value over here uh, sorry not the real spring client actually so spring client and the username is himanshu and the password is one two three okay okay and the it's the grant tap is password so this will remain password and the password you specify the uh, password you have specified in the uh, key clock console now let's head it uh, send this request and see what happens and there we go we are getting the access token now right so if we change the username let's say if we provide a different one it will give us a error that invalid user credentials so our key clock setup is good right now let's start our spring boot server uh, spring boot application and we say run and the application is started now okay so first hit the endpoint this one hello which will be on port 8181 so let's do it no auth and hit it and now what we are getting is 401 because we haven't provided the token now which token it requires it requires the bearer token and the token should come from uh, the one which is provided by key clock server so let's make a new request to key clock server yeah now we are getting the token copy this one till here copy over here remove this one and then paste it and send it there we go so we are getting the response so now uh, since the token is valid we are getting the response from our endpoint if we are not providing the token uh, or token is incorrect we will uh, get some error right for not one unauthorized and if you look at the logs see this is the exception uh, for the access denied one and once it succeeded earlier over there we will be getting a log as authenticated uh, true yeah so that's all uh, it's it's a short one so let's revisit uh, very quickly the spring boot application is uh, very minimal uh, a controller with get mapping of hello that's it and then a security configuration uh, where we are defining the security filter chain bean over here and we are authorizing every request and the resource server is using the jwt with the default uh, configures we are enabling web security and we say it's a configuration in the properties file we specify the url for key clock and the realm for both uh, jwt issuer as well as the key clock issuer uri uh, the client id is the one which we specified the key clock while setting up and uh, yeah these are the configurations and then moving on to the key clock uh, we just 
download the key clock and uh, unzip it in the uh, in our uh, directory and then we run it with the start dev command so the command will be like this okay and it will be under the bin directory of the key clock here we first created a realm using the create realm uh, button over here and even before this one we first created an admin user and then logged in with that admin user this one and then we created a realm after creating a realm uh, we go to the clients where we create a client uh, spring client after creating a client we head to the uh, roles where we created one role then we head to a user where we created one user and in the user's credentials we set its password you can reset it change it and uh, in the role mapping we specified that uh, role and yeah th that's all uh, right so that's all uh, we did in this one and then finally we run the application and then we head to the postman so for the post request this is this request is going to the uh, key clock server and the get request is the our protected resource okay so the key clock server will require the uh, url encoded form over here and these are the details it is looking for client id username password grant type and we provided details accordingly and then in, in the response we are getting the access token and then we use the same access token uh, in the bearer token authorization passing the token over here and we get the response okay i think we have changed it so can get a new one copy paste it send it yeah all right yeah so that's all in this video if you have any suggestions or feedback please let me know in the comment section thank you everyone thanks for watching have a nice day